Hi, my name is Dr. Srinivas Iyengar. I'm currently the Director of Structural Heart at Boulder Community Health Hospital here in Boulder, Colorado. I'd like to thank Cardiovascular Innovations Digital 2020 for letting me present how I managed a difficult self-expanding TAVR case. These are my disclosures. Let's go with the background of the patient. This was a 75-year-old female with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and COPD. She's had worsening chest pain and dyspnea and exertion. Her cath showed non-obstructive CAD. Her echo showed severe aortic stenosis with mild MR and a normal ejection fraction. Her aortic valve area measured at 0.7 centimeters squared with an AV mean gradient of greater than 40 millimeters. So her pre-evaluation. The patient was seen by CT surgery. Her CAT scans revealed diffuse vascular disease and a porcelain aorta of the ascending aorta. So this feature, coupled with her underlying COPD, made the patient prohibitive for open AVR. So we then proceeded with a TAVR evaluation. The patient discussed at the TAV valve team meeting and it was decided that TAVR was the best option given the risk factors involved. The question was now dealing with access given her vascular issues. Here is an image of her left subclavian artery. The angiogram clearly shows that if you can tell in the ostium of the left subclavian, a high grade stenosis. There's also narrowing across the left clavicle area as well. Here you have your aortic iliac angiogram and what you can tell is in the right common iliac area, there's another chunk of calcium which actually on digital subtracting, subtraction imaging did show that this was quite narrowed. Luckily, the femoral arteries bilaterally were healthy, at least on the left side, which would give us a straight path into the aorta. The axis issues. So we know the right common iliac artery had a high grade stenosis. The distal aorta, which was not seen on the prior angiogram, which I just showed, did show a 50 to 75% narrowing with a 30 millimeter gradient. The left subclavian, we saw osteal disease. So at this time, we decided if we needed a secondary access, what would it be? And we came to the conclusion that the carotid artery might be suitable. So our decision initially was to plan to attempt the left common femoral artery with a large sheath, a right radial artery for the pigtail, and a carotid artery as a backup. Our choice of valve in this case was a Medtronic core valve Evolute R26 millimeters. This case was done prior to our, our our uh, availability of the Pro Plus. For the TAVR, we chose a self-expanding platform secondary to concerns about aggressive balloon inflation in the porcelain aorta. Obviously, with the balloon expandable platform, we would have to dilate quite aggressively when we're deploying the TAVR valve. Hence, we chose this platform secondary to that reason. The Evolute R chosen secondary to the lower franchise as well. The Pro Plus, again, was not yet available at this time, at this case. In order to successfully deliver the system, the choice was made to perform serial up dilatations. First, we decided to deliver the TAVR through the sheath rather than a straight naked approach given the concern of catching the distal aortic calcification. So we were grinded through the aorta. We performed up dilations with 8, 12, 14, and 18 French dilators. We then placement of a Gore 18 French sheath which got us through the distal aortic lesion. So we thought we had success. We were through the distal aorta, but when we crossed the valve, the confider wire was placed, we then performed the BAV and we saw the true extent of the calcium. And keep note here during the BAV how calcified that ascending aorta is. It appeared to be that there is significant calcifications all through the ascending aorta. So we moved onward. The BAV revealed heavy calcifications were present. The Evolute was delivered without issue through the sheath and distal aorta. However, once we got around the arch, we could not get the valve to cross the native aortic valve. So during this time, we pulled tips and tricks out. The Evolute was getting stuck on the STJ calcium. So we were careful not to push too hard because a dissection can occur quite easily. So we gently twisted and turned, but to no avail. We, decide, we decided to remove the valve and place a new wire in the LV. Again, we did have a sheath in place, so removing the valve was not an issue. With this self-expanding platform, that was one of the advantages of using this type of situation because of what we were getting into. We decided to go with an Amplat super stiff wire. It was no good. We then switched out for a Lundquist, and that still was no good. 
we then try to double wire in the aorta, as in a wire from the radial sheath through the pigtail into the LV and a wire from the groin access. However, it still was no good. We still could not get the actual the valve to cross the aortic valve from this position. We tried from the radial sheath an additional technique, a balloon inflation into the aortic valve from the radial sheath to see if it could deflect off and make the core valve actually go into the valve off the balloon. Unfortunately, there was still no luck in getting the evolute across the finish line. So now what? Well, I'll give you advice. Don't be a one-trick pony program. Have a backup access plan. The decision was made at that time to go to a right carotid artery. The patient was electrically intubated and a cut down was performed by my surgical colleague. Once we had performed that, we had placed the valve via the right common carotid. And as you can see here, we're right there at the level of the annulus. We then started flowering the valve with the pacing rate of approximately 100. But as you can see, when you're coming from the carotid, you have an ability to dive deep. And we were diving deep with this valve point. And you can tell here at 80%, we were quite deep. Luckily, this, we would have the ability of retrievability so we retrieved the valve, recapped it, and decided to deploy it higher. And as you can see here, we're close to the annulus, maybe two to four millimeters at this time in depth. And once we had done that and fully deployed, we then took a look at our echocardiogram, which shows, once again, very nice deployment here. No impingement on the mitral valve. She did have significant mitral annular calcification, but we did not have any impingement via our deployment. And you can tell our post gradients here actually quite nice with the mean gradient of three millimeters of mercury. So the lessons from this case, number one, with the deployment, you, we had trivial PV leak, we had excellent hemodynamics, the right carotid was repaired right there, and the patient was extubated soon thereafter, and she was home two days later. The left groin for the additional information was closed with bilateral perclosis successfully without issues as well, and the right radial artery was closed with a radial band. The lessons from this case, always be prepared for alternate access, especially in vascular paths. Have all necessary equipment available. Don't think that you should have had it and now cannot perform an alternate access because you weren't prepared. And utilize all of your team's skills, and that includes surgery as well. A number of times we tried to force the issue by the femoral arteries percutaneously, but let's be honest, TAVR is a team effort and your surgeons are more than willing to help out, if not as well being the primary drivers of the program, so definitely utilize your colleague's skill. Thank you so much.